Hello. Here's a video discussion of the lesson in module four, properties of the operations on integers and forms of rational numbers. We have nine properties of operations on integers and I hope you already learned about the fundamental operations on integers. So our first property is the commutative property of addition. This means changing the order of addends does not change the sum. So when we say addends, these are numbers being added. Let's take a look at this example. 2 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 2. So the addends in this example are 2 and 5. So changing their orders does not change their sum or the answer. So let's verify. Okay, let's verify this one. Okay. 2 plus 5 is 7. And 7 is equal to 5 plus 2. 7. Okay, so we can observe that we change the order of the addends 2 and 5, but the answer or the sum is still the same. Okay, next property is commutative property of multiplication. Changing the order of the factors does not change the product. Okay, when we say factors, these are the numbers being multiplied. So in our example, we have negative 3 multiplied by positive 8 and 8 multiplied by negative 3. Okay, so we change gihapon ang order sa atong factors. Let's verify if they have the same product. Negative 3 times 8, positive 8. Our answer is negative 24. How about 8 times negative 20, 8 times negative 3? Answer is still negative 24. Okay, the same. So, walay na usab sa answer. Next property, associative property of addition. Changing the grouping of the addends does not change the sum. Okay, we have three or more addends, and then a group na to. Kung atong i-change ang grouping, dili na gihapon siya ma-sub. Let's verify this one. First, ang i-group ang negative 3 plus 5. Then, ang second nga part is kaning 5 plus 2 maoy gi-group. Okay, let's have negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. And then plus 2 and let's copy the equal sign so let's also copy negative 3 plus 5 plus 2 that's 7 okay 2 plus 2 is what is 2 plus 2 okay that is positive 4 Positive 4 and negative 3 plus 7 is, is still positive 4. So, walay na usab sa sum. Okay, associative property of multiplication is similar to addition. But in multiplication, we are changing the group of the factors. Okay, let's this one. Let's have this one. 2 times 4 is 8 times 6 equals 2 times 4 times 6 is 24. So 8 times 6, that is 48. And this is equal to 2 times 4 is also 48. 
So you can observe, we changed the group of the factors, but our product did not ch change. Okay. Next, distributive property. Oh, sorry, distributive property. Okay. This is defined as multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each addend by that number and then adding the two products. Okay, so kani ato siyang i-distribute the same ratio sa atong gilargo og add ang duha ka product. Okay, neg let's verify. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And then negative 3 times positive 5 is negative 15. Okay, that is the same as 12 minus 15. So, ato lang gidistribute ang kaning 3 sa solod sa parenthesis. Okay. Next, identity property for addition. So, adding 0 and any number does not change the value of the number. Okay, so this means any number added uh, with 0 is equal to the number. Example, negative 7 plus 0 is still negative 7. Okay, for multiplication, we also have an identity property. So multiplying 1 and any number does not change the value of the number. So this means any number multiplied multiplied by 1, the answer is always the number. Example, negative 8 times 1. So, answer is negative 8. So, dili mausab. Next, inverse property of addition. The sum of any integer and its additive inverse is 0. Okay, when we say additive inverse, ang opposite sign na sa tong integer. Example, we have positive 6. The additive, additive inverse of ne positive 6 is negative 6. So when we add the two numbers, the answer is 0. Okay, another example. Uh, negative... 10 plus positive 10, the answer is 0. Last property is the zero property of multiplication. So the product of any number and zero is always zero. Okay, bisan pag ma negative or positive na yung times. O zero, answer is always zero. In this example, we have negative five times zero. So the answer is zero. Okay, that's it for the properties on the operations of integers. Okay, let's proceed to the rational numbers. Okay, so let's present another um, another slide. Okay, so let's have rational numbers. Okay, when we say rational numbers, so these are numbers in the form of A over B. So where B should not be equal to zero. Nga naman. Kaya kung mag zero na gani ang denominator sa atong number, ang atong uh, expression is automatic and defined. Okay, so any number when you divide by zero is always undefined. Okay, we have two forms of rational numbers. We have fraction form. And these are the examples, and also a decimal form. So examples here. 
So we have here 2,500, 375,000. And then this one, 1,500. What do you think is the meaning of this bar? Okay. Any idea? Okay, so when we see a bar above a decimal number, this means the numbers are repeating. We can also write this way. We can say 0 0.151515 and ellipsis. The meaning, walay ka hunungan. Padayan siya ng 151515. Okay. And then, next, let's convert fractions to decimals. Okay, let's have example one, one fourth. So the rule for converting fractions to decimals is we divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay, so let's have 1 divided by 4. So that cannot be. So let's just write 0 here. And then we add a decimal point and a 0. So make sure you align your decimal point in the answer. Next, 10 divided by 4 is 10 divided by 4. Okay, we have 2. Then 2 times 4, that is 8. Next, we subtract 10 minus 8. So we have uh, 2. Okay. And then we still have a remainder, so we can add another 0 here and then bring down our 0. So we, all, we are now have. 20, and then let's divide by 4. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. Next, 5 times 4 is 20. So 20 minus 20, answer is 0. Okay, so our 1 fourth is the same uh, or is equal to 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Okay. Next example. 3 eighths. So again, divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay. 3 divided by 8. So cannot be. So let's have decimal point and add 0. Then let's align our decimal point. 30 divided by 8 is... Okay, 30 divided by 8 is 3. 3 times 8, it's 24. Okay, 24 minus 30... Oh, no, 30 minus 24. Answer... Answer is okay, 6. We still have a remainder. So we can add another 0 and bring down. We now have 60 and then divide by divided by 8. So we can have 7. 7 times 8, it's 56. Then subtract. 60 minus 56 is 4. Still have a remainder. We can have another 0 and then bring down. Always remember when you add another 0, make sure to bring down also. Okay, 40 divided by 8 is, is 5. 5 times 4. We have 40. Then subtract the 2. 40 minus 40 is 0. So our 3 eighths 
is equal to 0 0.375 or 375 thousands. Okay, next. 5 over 33. Okay, again, divide numerator by the denominator. 5 divided by 33 is cannot be. So let's have another decimal point and zero. Next, align the decimal point. 50 divided by 33 is 1. 1 times 33, we have 33. 50 minus 33 is 17. I'm sorry. <clears throat> then, add another zero. And bring down. 170 divided by 33 is 5. Okay. 5 times 33, that is 165. Then subtract the 2. 170 minus 165. So the answer is... Okay. Five. Okay, add another zero and then bring down. 50 minus 33, I, sorry, 50 divided by 33 is 1. 1 times 33 is 33. Okay, so 50 minus 33 Okay, ito nang i-move para siya matungod. Okay. 50 minus 33 is 17. Okay, we add another 0 and bring down our 0. 170 divided by 33 is 5. 5 times 33, 165. 170 minus 165, we have 5. So it seems like we are just repeating our process. So our answer is a repeating decimal. So we can write 0 0.15, 15, 15, and so on. Or an ellipsis. Or we can write this way, um, 0 0.15 and then bar above the two repeating numbers. Okay, that's it for converting fractions to decimals. Okay, let's proceed to converting decimals to fractions. Okay, let's convert. 25 hundredths to fraction. Okay, first step, uh, we have to make our decimal a numerator and have a denominator of 1. Okay, 0 0.25 and denominator is 1. Okay, let's multiply this by 100. Okay, we use 100. Since our decimal has two decimal places. If this is 1, so we multiply by 10. If this is 3, so we multiply by 1,000. This is to remove our decimal point. Okay, 25 hundreds times 100 is 25. And 1 times 100 is 100. Okay, so... In this case, let's find a number that can divide both 25 and 100. Greatest number. So the, or what we call the greatest common factor. So, unsa may makadivide o pinakadako nga number nga makadivide o 25, makadivide sa 100. Okay, we have... 25. 
Okay, 25. So, i-divide na to sa duha. So, 25 divided by 25 is okay, 1. And 100 divided by 25 is 4. So, 25 hundredths is equal to 1 fourth. Okay. Next. There is another rule for converting repeating decimals to fractions. Okay, let's have example one. We can use that. So, now easier way. So, how many decimals are repeating or how many digits are repeating in this example? We have a okay, two. So that indicates the number of digits for our denominator. Okay, we use nine since our decimal is repeating. Since there are two repeating digits, we also need to write two nine in our denominator. And let's make the digits which are repeating as numerator. And then, Reduce to lowest term. So divide both numbers by a number, uh, by, by the same number. Okay, so 15 and 99 can be divided by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5 and 99 divided by 3 is 33. So that's the easiest way. Okay, so we write um, 15, or re repeating decimal, which is 15, is equal to 5 over 33. How about this another example? We only have two as repeating decimal or repeating digit. Okay, so let's just. Answer directly. Okay, pila ka book nag repeat? We have how many digits? Okay, we have two or one. Okay, only one ang na repeat, which is ang number nga two. So pila ka nine natong iswat? Okay, only right one nine. Okay, and the um, numerator is the repeating digit. Okay, can we divide any number both to 2 and 9? So, except 1, wala na no. So, this is now our final answer. So, I'll, I, ju I just gave you the easier way. For you not to be confused in converting repeating decimals to fractions. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something.